Hey everybody, how's everybody doing tonight? Uh, my apologies for the little bit of a late start. We had a few technical difficulties, but we've uh, got those all worked out now, I think. So uh, tonight I'm going to be talking with uh, my good friend, Mr. Bill Griggs from CNC Router Tips fame. And uh, I've got the uh, chat blown up real big over here next to me, so I'll be watching the chat um, for any questions you might have. And uh, just want to get a couple of things out of the way before, uh, before we get started talking with Bill. Um, the, if you haven't heard, we've got the Kling Spore Extravaganza in Hickory, North Carolina this weekend. I'm going to be heading out tomorrow, um, driving up there to Hickory. So looking forward to a great wood show up there in Hickory. Um, also, uh, Hobby's Wood Shop is going to have... For the month of November, a 30-day almost impossible challenge. So if you want to get the details on that, uh, go over to Hobby's Woodshop. I guess it's hobbieswoodshop.com, or you can go to his YouTube channel. He's got a video out talking about that. So uh, I'm going to try to participate as much as I can in that. So looking forward to that. Also, I was telling Bill... Um, last whatever it was last week or no i guess it was maybe before that uh, that i had a, a brain fart and accidentally deleted uh the cnc with dave show episode 28 which had you on there bill mm -hmm. um but i mentioned it last week uh on the uh, youtube live stream i was doing from out in the garage and a gentleman by the name of um john Reville, R-E-V-I-L-L, -L. he popped up in the chat and he goes, oh, well, I've, I recorded that. I've got it. So I got with him and he sent, um, sent me a link to his Dropbox and I downloaded and turned around and uploaded it back. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it is back on. Of course, it's starting all over. I think we've already, uh, it's already got 400 and some views. So, um, but yeah, we had to had to kind of start over with that. So big shout out to to John uh, there for letting me uh, get that back because on all these live live stream shows and stuff, you know, I don't have any backup. I don't download them or anything. So, uh, but that was a that was a brain fart on my my thing. I thought I was deleting that video out of the queue that I was smart casting to my TV, and instead I was deleting. So. Anyhow, and one final thing, uh, too, I want to give a shout out to Steve Nealon. I know he's over there in the chat uh, of Harnell Media Group. Uh, he's going to be uh, working on some website stuff for me. Uh, a lot of you folks know I've got two websites, DaveGatton.com and GarageWorkCNC.com. And he's going to try to try to put everything together and make it a little more organized and handle that for me. So, uh, Appreciate uh, appreciate that, Steve, and, and that'll be uh, that'll be coming up here pretty soon. So, all right, well, let's get started talking to Mr. Green. I'll let you introduce yourself, Bill. I mean, there might be somebody that's just come out of their cave or something and don't know who you are, but <laughs> uh, it's it's probably not that easy to know uh, you know who I am or whatever. But I'm Bill Griggs. Uh, I am the host of the CNC Router Tips podcast, and uh, uh, I'm also the administrator of the Facebook group by the same name with a hashtag in front of it. So um, the hashtag CNC Router Tips group there. Um, I've been doing stuff in the CNC community for, for a while and posting YouTube videos and uh, uh, doing the podcast and just, you know, having a blast. So, Yeah, and Bill, I... I I know you're not quite there yet, but I'm going to go ahead and congratulate you on 10,000 members on the CNC Router Tips Facebook group because I know it's probably just a few days off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I had hoped to um, have that done by today, but um, you know the hangup is actually me because I have uh, several members who are waiting to be approved to join, and um, you know just so many things going on haven't gotten done. So we're going to celebrate okay. when it happens. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. Yeah. I, I watch your numbers all the time and I'm like, man, it, they're jumping up 
really quick and I knew you were going to hit 10,000 uh, pretty soon. So uh, yeah. anyway, I, I, is there anything? Go ahead, Bill. Oh, I never had any idea when we got this started uh, a little over two years ago that, you know, there were that many people out there who were into the CNC routers and it really came as a, quite a surprise to me to see the growth of it. So I'm very happy with that. Um, and, you know, I, I've enjoyed meeting all the people there. So that is really the best part of the whole situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know I've met a ton of uh, great folks, um, you know, at the woodworking shows and hangouts and, you know, Google hangouts and all kinds of things, but, you know, folks I'd never otherwise would have would have met. But uh, Mark Lindsay just said, yeah, I remember when Bill got all excited over 400 members. <laughs> that was a long, long time oh, ago. Yeah. Wasn't it? yeah, it wasn't that far ago, but it seems it seems like it now. Uh, I, I just can't uh, deal with that, you know, how quick it's it's happened. Uh, to put it in perspective, in December, uh, I think it was December 20. Third or twenty eighth or something like that of last year, we were celebrating having our five thousandth member. Wow! So in a little under a year, we've we've doubled the group size. So yeah. that's just yeah. who knew. Yeah, yeah, that's that's awesome though. Um, I guess uh, you know I want to get into talking about. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, transition from. Uh, hobby to business using a CNC. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think we kind of touched on that when you were on the, the other show. Uh, but I know that, uh, that that's always a, a good topic to have because, you know, as well as I do, when people get a, a CNC, they may start out. And it's just going to be a hobby. And before long, they're making this or that for folks and getting orders and, the next thing you know, they've got a little business on their on their hands. So yeah, it, it's amazing how quickly that happens. Um, and inside of the group, you know, when you're looking at ten thousand people, you know, and and watching what it is that they post daily, and you know, you'll see a guy going from suddenly, uh, you know, just having the machine and learning how to use it, to suddenly having a steady income source and a steady um, stream of jobs that they're doing, and it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it really, it, it really uh, depends on, you know, what your goals are when you start out, whether this is something that you just want to do is, you know, on the side as a hobby or whether you want to transition it into a business that's, um, you know, completely up to you, but it, it's, um, it can be life changing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I see, uh, like I said, I see guys all on there all the time and in some cases, it's kind of the other way. They've already got a, you know, making things as a hobby, but don't have a CNC. And then they kind of want a CNC to enhance their productivity or, or, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. So what, um, for somebody who's thinking about getting a CNC, uh, to for a, for a small business or whether they already have one or they're thinking about starting one, what tips would, would you give that person? Um, the biggest tip I could give them is to, is to stop before they do it and analyze um, how they're going to use it, whether uh, they have already planned um, a product that they want to make with it or whether uh, they're just going to wing it and, um, you know, it's just another tool in their workshop and they're going to try and figure it out as they go. Both methods work, but if you're shooting at a specific goal, the first method is, is better to, to actually know what it is that you're trying to make um, right up front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know when when people ask me, uh, and I see, I see this question all the time in, in my Facebook groups and, and especially yours, but somebody will, will say, well, I'm, I'm looking to get a CNC. What, what are your recommendations? And I'm like, I don't, I don't say it, but I'm thinking to myself, man, you, you can't just, you got to give us a lot more information yeah. than that for us to be able to answer that. 
Mm-hmm. It's like saying, I, I, I need a car. What do you recommend? And there's just so many choices out there. Um, and not every car fits every need. So it's the same with the routers. Um, you know, uh, Sidewinder may be a, a nice choice for, for some folks. Um, a Stepcraft might be a nice choice for others. Um, you know, then there's all the Chinese machines. Then there's the shop bots and uh, cam masters and, you know, on and on and on. They're all good that, you know, there's very few bad machines out there now because they don't survive in the market if they're, right. if they're bad. Right. Cause yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of machines out there. So the, the, the bad ones are going to, going to hang around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, it's just knowing what your target projects are. I mean, um, you get a different answer if you're going to be in a cabinet shop making kitchen cabinets um, day in, day out, you know, in, employing several guys you know you get a different machine than if you're just going to make the occasional sign to sell at the um, uh, farmer's market every once in a while you know Mm -hmm. totally different machines yeah and if i may bill if i can uh, kind of use your uh because i know you you make a little product called a uh, triple edge finder sure Yep. And I think that kind of led into some bigger and better things for you as well, didn't it? Yeah, it, it did. Um, when I got started, um, I first off, all the CNC router tables that I own right now, um, with the exception of the Stepcraft, uh, have been machines that I built from scratch. Um, and, um, you know, when I started out, if you wanted to get us into CNC, it cost you a really pretty penny. And so I was making everything I wanted. And one of the things that I identified that needed to happen if I wanted to make projects regularly was the ability to set my X, Y, and, and Z. And so I came up with the trip ledge finder. And this is, this is one of the earlier ones that that's out there, but it's, it's just a little oh, touch. Good. I was hoping you'd have one handy. <laughs> yeah. It's just a little touch plate that you put down on your, um, your work piece. And, you know, the the bit comes in here and it touches a couple of times and sets zero and then it can touch the top or the bottom. And that will give you the Z uh, height. So as a result of, you know, coming up with that and and starting to to market those, um, you know, that started to be recurring income for me, you know, um, making just those little touch plates. And I, you know, I, I got to the point where um, I, was, I was using a friend's machine to make them and he got a, a nice contract. And so the machine wasn't available anymore. Mm-hmm. And so I had to kind of make a decision. And last year, I kind of took everybody through the decision making process with me. I decided that I was going to get a, a, a Tormach milling machine so that I could make these in the garage. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that's what I ended up doing. And it's, it was, a, it was a great decision. Um, knowing what it was I was trying to make, I was able to choose the right machine in that case. It wasn't a CNC router. It was a milling machine because for cutting aluminum and, and brass and things like that, you really do need the rigidity of a milling machine to get consistent results. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can cut stuff on your CNC router. Everybody does that, but you don't get the same surface finish. You don't, you know, it's, yeah. it's, they're, they're just not really machine. designed for that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so have mean, you got, so have go you added to your, uh, your menu of products now? I mean, I know the triple edge finder is probably your big, big seller, but have you added some, some additional products now that you've got a tour mock that will crank them out? Uh, it's funny. You should ask that Dave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I've I've got a couple of product products that I, I've got in the works. I'm not ready to um, announce them. Um, a couple are CNC related, and um, one is totally in a different area. Um, the reason that you want to come out with extra pro, you know, different products besides just the one is, you know, uh, that whole having your eggs all your eggs in one basket feeling, you know, um, folks could stop by on the triple edge finder tomorrow. And that would be that, 
um, and I would have a big machine sitting in the garage idle. So I need to to diversify, as they say, or come up with some other product. Um, so that's what I did, um, and that's what I'm doing. So it's it's good. I hope to have these things out within in the next um, um, month or so, but I don't want to put that kind of constraint on myself because um, mm -hmm. I want to do it right. Um, cause you really only get one shot at it here, um, to make a good product. Uh, I'm not saying that it has to be a perfect product, but it has to be a well thought out product. Uh, so, I mean, yeah. you, you, you can tell just from putting out your, um, garage work CNC, you know, how many iterations did you go through with that? Um, to, to get it to the point where you were ready to release it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and you know, you mentioned the, the triple edge finder, not having all your eggs in one basket. I really doubt that people are ever going to quit completely buying it because as you know, there's always new folks getting into CNC. So that's, that's good for both you and me. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but, uh, but yeah, well, I can't wait to see what kind of, uh, what kind of new stuff do you, I'm not going to put you on the spot and ex ask you to, you know, yeah, uh, show it here, but, uh, well, I appreciate that. I'll yeah. just tell folks, keep an eye on Bill's website, cncroutertips.com and, and look for new and exciting products coming off of that, uh, that Tormach. And I have to tell you, Bill, I, when you were, uh, has it been a year, I guess, when you started, uh, getting that Tormach in? I got that in, and um, it arrived December 28th. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I got to tell you, I was just green with envy because I would really like to have one of those things. And especially you got the, the biggest one, I think, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think uh, uh, I know exactly the feeling you have because uh, I've got the same feeling about one of your, uh, your garage works machines. It looks so cool. Uh, that safety orange and everything. And I can think of a million things I would do with it. Um, what was um, what was hard for me in that decision, you know, whether to, to to do it was that was the largest single purchase I'd ever made that was not a car or a house. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, uh, Tormax are not cheap. Um, they're not as expensive as a Haas or, or um, you know, a Mori Seiki like uh, uh, John Grimsmo uh, just bought or, you know, whatever. Uh, and John Saunders bought the, the big Haas. But mm -hmm. they were a substantial um, thing. And I had to know ahead of time whether my product that I was producing could pay for that machine and, uh, you know, pay it off. So you know, I had to do the, the, the homework first and I kind of encourage people to do that when they're choosing a router table because, um, it's not, the router is one part of the equation. I mean, you got to spend, let's say you're spending three or $4,000 on a router. Well, you're going to spend three or $4,000 on tooling as well mm -hmm. uh, over the long haul. And if you're not ready for that, um, you could miss out on business opportunities and you could miss out on all sorts of things because you don't have the tools you need to, to, to do the jobs that you want to do. Um, there's a really good book, uh, Dave, that um, I just got that I, I think is um, um, a really good one. I, I just interviewed uh, Chris Gillibo on, on the podcast um, I don't remember the episode number. I think it was episode 53. If anybody wants to go to cncroutertips.com, uh, it should be out there. But he just released a book called uh, The Side Hustle, where he takes you from your idea to income in 27 days. Each day he lays out something that you're supposed to do to you know, make progress towards getting your project out there. Um, and this is not something where you're going to run out and quit your job. This is something where you're going to try and do it on the side, like, like you were doing and uh, like I am doing um, to generate some income to help pay for your hobbies. And that's the smart way to, to start a business. I think. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, 
you know, to me, there was there was times when, you know, of course, I you know used to work a full time job and I started doing a lot of this stuff on the side. And there was a time when you you think to your, you know, you're sitting at your desk at your boring job <laughs> thinking yeah. this job is really taken away from my my what used to be a hobby because it's really costing me money because I can't spend it. And, you know, and then when it gets to that point, that's when you need to take a look at, you know, taking the leap and, and do it. And of course, in my case, they, you know, they laid me off. So, uh, you know, and being the age I was, I thought, well, let's just, uh, let's just give this a go and see. Uh, so, I, uh, and that's probably the push I needed really. Mm -hmm. uh, this this all happened uh, what around uh, January or February last year, right? Uh, June of last uh, 2016. What was it that yeah. long ago? I didn't realize that. Yeah. 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 So um, now, do you regret doubling? Do you regret doubling down and betting on yourself? Um, the only thing I kind of regret is that I that I didn't leave on my terms. Mm-hmm. Probably, I guess, you know, when you have a, a job and you, you get that direct deposit every Friday and, you know, you get, you know, it, it's it's a big, uh, you know, it's really something to think about. You know, of course, with the health insurance and all that, too, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a big step going from, I won't say a cushy job, but a good steady job. And then all of a mm -hmm. sudden it's like, okay, this is, I mean, it. I, I got to make it work or go hungry. One of the two. So, yeah. And that's but. the whole point of, of why you're trying to, to get something on the side um, income wise for those emergencies so that you can make it from, you know, th that sudden crisis that hits. Um, I'm not some big guru or anything about this. I mean, I'm just another guy who, you know, decided to take a shot and, and do something. Um, but, you know, I worry about those things and I thought about those things and um, you've got to have something going. And if you've got a CNC router, there's no excuse, you know, for not doing something with it or, or yeah. making some income from it. Um, yeah. This is, um, this is that book I was just talking about, folks. Um, so, side hustle. Okay. Yeah, it's a good book, or else I wouldn't have shown it. Um, because I'm, I'm not a big promoter of of um, of things. I try and keep that separate. But um, when I've had something that has helped me and or that has worked, I mean, I used his first book, the hundred dollar startup, which I've talked about several times on the podcast, and. Mm -hmm. um, as the basis for, you know, how I was going to lay out my business and get started. This new book, though, he hit the nail on the head. And if you haven't got a copy of that, you're you're doing yourself a, a disservice. You should, you know, get it, maybe listen to it on Audible or whatever. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Okay. Um, yeah, and... and you know what we just talked about you had like i said you had your triple edge finder and you know i guess you were making a reasonable amount of them to uh you know to start thinking about getting your own mm -hmm. machine and that's what one thing i want people to understand is you don't you don't go well let me buy a cnc router product to make i don't think right. that's a good way you need to have a product maybe maybe it's even something you're you're routing out with a hand template or you know you're making some other way and you need the cnc to help increase mm -hmm. productivity or or you know maybe you know maybe you're just using it to make more accurate templates or whatever but I, you know I, I hate when people say well i'm going to get a cnc router and then i'm going to figure out what i'm going to make and go into business i'm like nah, that's kind of backwards yeah i agree um, we can point to our, our friend, Sean Fairburn. Um, I, I know you're familiar with Sean, uh, from, yeah. from the Facebook group, uh, Sean and his, his kids were just, um, they're about to be featured or they, or they just were featured in make magazine. Um, they make 
chairs and stools and things and they were making them by hand and they wanted a cnc router and so they went out and they built one and then they began producing the stools and the chairs that they had because they already had the idea of what it was that they wanted to make and then they got the machine that could help them make that and now they're they're selling them all over the all over the uh, uh the country and uh they've got a nice website that his kids made uh, along with him and his kids helped him to make that router table and you know it's been a great family project for mm -hmm. them and you know i hope that someday it will be a very fruitful business for him i they're just getting started so i don't know how um you know how that's working for him yet but i'm i'm wishing good things for him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I've, I've uh watched his uh build kind of through facebook posts back what was it a year or so ago i guess when he started doing that mm -hmm. he's got a very interesting machine it's uh kind of leans up against the wall or something if i recall yeah yeah he's got it uh, a slanted uh, router very much like a um uh the saws that you'd see at lowe's or home depot that they cut up your your pieces of the panel saw um, it's, instead it is uh, a router that's laid out in that configuration so he puts the board on kind of at an angle and the the bit comes down and cuts into uh mm -hmm. into the surface so yeah it's really neat. Yeah. yeah and it looks like it's really heavy duty too yeah i think he um, used um two inch um steel um pipe for all of the for all of the construction of that thing it was huge mm -hmm. yeah so very very all right stout. I'm uh, I'm over here watching the chat, guys. I don't see any questions. If anybody's got any questions that you'd like to ask Bill, uh, now's a good time. Um, I also want to let folks know, because I, I don't know if everybody knows this about Bill Griggs or not, uh, but you are also a reseller of Vectric products. Is that correct? And yes. I think you sell Mach 3 and Mach 4 as well, right? That's correct, yeah. Um, you know, I, when I began selling the, the, uh, the edge finder, folks were, um, asking about software and how to, uh, how to use it. And so, um, I've been using Vectric products basically since they came out and, uh, you know, I acquired and became a, a, a reseller for their software. Um, I think this is the first time I've ever talked about it, um, publicly, but it's, it's up on the website. If anyone is inclined at, um, um, I try and separate my commercial stuff from, from, you know, the podcast and everything. So I have two websites. I have CNC router tips where it's just informational and uh, you know, the episodes and things like that. And then I have the maker's guide, which is my website, the maker's guide.com where I sell the triple edge finder and stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, and uh, the vector products. So uh, I also teach people how to use them. And that's kind of my um, my little thing that I, I, I want to do to help them. Because, you know, you can spend all kinds of money on software. If you can't use it, it's it's just wasted. Um, so, you know, I'd like to yeah. get them going fast. Yeah. And I know I, w I wanted to ask you myself because uh, you and I talked, I think, with a Facebook message a while back. Uh, I think you'd ask me if I had anybody that was using Mach 4. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I, I told you that I'd heard it was a little buggy. And, and I think you told me that it looks like they've got a lot of the bugs worked out. Do you use Mach 4? I have. Uh, I now? had Mach 4 on um, my Grizzly milling machine before um, before I sold that um, to um, when I was getting ready to buy the um, uh the Tormach machine. So yeah, I have used uh, Mach 4 and it, it works fine. It does um, a lot of things, you know, very well, just like Mach 3 does. Uh, the thing I liked about it was um, it had probing built into it. So um, before when I'd sell someone a triple edge finder, I would have to tell them, okay, now you've got the triple edge finder in Mach 3. Now you have to go out and buy a screen set um, like the Mach 2010 screen set or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. 
or the big, you know, the big text uh, screen set, and they'd put it on there, and that would give them that functionality. But Mach 4 has that stuff built in. So to me, it was much easier for them to use, the, you know, a triple edge finder with that. But, um, you know, Mach 4 is the new program on the black, and folks are, are hesitating to, you know, adopt it. And I don't is, know why. Is that, is the, um, that probing feature is that, that you just mentioned, is that pretty much the biggest difference between Mach 3 and Mach 4? Or are there some other differences? There's there's some other differences. Um, Mach four actually, in the in the base form, in the hobby form that it comes in, is actually a, a little more elegant, in my opinion. It's got the the things that you would have to go out and do just included in there. Things, you know, Mach four was written right from the ground up. It is not a, a version of Mach three at all. Uh, it is. Um, you know, they started from scratch in a new programming language and rewrote all the code. Um, so I, it's my personal opinion that it is, it's a pretty solid piece of software. The uh, difference is Mach 3 has been around so long that there are many people who have written, um, you know, add-ons and plugins for it that they have not written those add-ons and plugins for uh, Mach 4, but in a lot of cases, you don't need them. So um, I don't know. I hope that that answers that question a little bit. Yeah. Well, I know with, with uh, you know, I'm asked all the time, do I use uh, Mach 4 or am I, am I going to get Mach 4? And, I, and my answer is, you know, I've had Mach 3 for, Gosh, I don't even remember how long. You know, I've had it for years. And as long as it works and does what I want it to do, why do I want to spend more money? Because I think, if I'm not mistaken, isn't Mach 4 a little more expensive than Mach 3? Yeah, out of the box, Mach, uh, Mach 4 is $200 retail. Uh, Mach 3 is 175 So it's about $25 more expensive. But if you look at um, Mach... Um, Mach 3 and then you're adding a screen set to do probing um, the Mach 2010 for instance is the most popular screen set it's $20 so you're still within $5 of it um, the other major difference between the two is that um, Mach 4 is designed to work with a motion control card like a smooth stepper or a UC uh, 100 or um, you know the um, the you know it's designed to work with with a motion controller like mm -hmm. that. Uh, Mach three was originally designed for parallel port. You can get some of those motion control cards to work with it using plugins, but you know it's just um, you have to add that functionality. Mach four already has it in it. So yeah, yeah. I use a, a UC one hundred. I in fact I have two of them out there in my garage and I found that even though the dedicated desktop computer that I use out there has a parallel port I've I just use the UC 100 it seems to run smoother to me mm -hmm. with with that than it does with the, the uh, parallel port not that the parallel port ran bad it's just that the UC 100 seems a little smoother yeah um, um most of the motion control cards have some programming in them to control the trajectory of the bit, um, which gives you smoother um, cuts, you know, it because they each have a little microprocessor built into them. So they take your G code and they um, finesse it a bit before they send it out to the, to the motors. So um, you would expect better uh, smoother cuts with a motion control card than you would without it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's why I've kind of been recommending to folks now, you know, to go ahead and, and you know, because it's a UC 100 is about 110, 115 bucks, mm -hmm. I think, you know, go ahead and get one. And in that way, when your old clunker computer with a parallel port, you know, bites the dust, you're already prepared and, and can run it. And, you know, it, to me, like I said, they did just run smoother to me with the UC 100. Uh, yeah. as opposed to the parallel port. Yeah, you see a lot of guys going out looking for old um, PCs with a parallel port, 
and Windows XP. And, you know, those are ready to die. And, and, you know, the minute you get them, I don't care, you know, how good a shape it is. They're 10 years, 15 years old sometimes. Um, and, uh, you know, they're ready to go. So if you can get into a modern PC, you know, using like a UC100 or, or a, a smooth stepper or whatever, I, I think you're, you're better off in the long run. You know, coming back to the business aspect of it, if you're dependent on making money from your machine and you lose an old Windows XP machine, it may take you a few weeks to find a replacement versus going down to Walmart or wherever and picking up a, a you know, modern Windows 7 or 10 machine and, and just plugging it in and going. Yeah. Mm hmm one other thing I wanted to ask you as far as the Mach 3 and Mach 4 deal was is in, I don't know, that's why I'm asking. I, I, I think I know, but I'll, I'll let you mm -hmm. explain it. It I think, isn't there a different um, user agreement with Mach 4 as there is with Mach 3? Yes. Yes, there is. Um, Mach 3, you were allowed, when you were given your license, you were allowed to download it to three uh, separate PCs and um, but the truth of the matter is you could download it to many more than that and people did um, and that led to um, some piracy issues and things like that and so in order to get things under control when they put out Mach 4 they gave your license and you had to specify what computer you were going to use it on when you installed it and it would only work on that computer. However, they still did give you two other licenses that you could use that software on if you contacted them. Now, I don't know if that has changed since, you know, since it was released, but you know, you weren't limited to just one PC, but I believe the number 3 was finite this time, you know, wouldn't mm -hmm. work on any more than that. So, um you know, you can double check on that because uh, obviously that hasn't come up a whole lot. So, yeah. Um, we've got a question over here in the chat, Bill. It says, uh, how do you compare Mach 3 slash 4 and the UC CNC software? Do you have any experience with the UC CNC software, Bill? Yes, I do. Um, I have a copy of it that um, uh, I have played around with it looks like fine software um, one difference uh, is that the UC uh, CNC software works with the UC 100 um, controller and those two are tied together so that one copy works with that one um, interface is that's my understanding um, so you're not able to use that interface on multiple computers uh, is that your understanding Dave I believe so yes I have I have two UC 100s mm -hmm. well, well let me just back up a little bit you know when I was doing the the CNC with Dave show uh, I bought a well I'd already bought a UC 100 and I was using it with Mach 3 mm -hmm. you know it worked great well then I went to buy the UC CNC software because I was going to kind of test drive it and kick the tires and all that and then kind of do a you know a show about it because people had been asking me about it and maybe it's just me because I'm you know not the sharpest tool in the shed all the time uh, but to me the 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 website when you buy it it was kind of misleading at least I thought so Mm -hmm. Because they make it sound like you can buy that UC CNC software for sixty dollars, and you're good to go. Well, then I found out that when you buy it, get it for sixty dollars and you download it, you got yourself a demo version of UC CNC software. It only works when you buy that UC one hundred, or you know, you can use the UC three hundred or whatever, but mm -hmm. you got to have at least the UC one hundred. Uh, to make it work well that didn't make me mad too much because I had already had a UC 100 anyway mm -hmm. 
but like you said, you, you kind of tie it into that software. Mm. Now I know I can take using Mach three, I can go to, I could take this laptop out here that, that I'm using right now mm -hmm. and I could take it out there and I could plug in one of my UC 100s and loading Mach three, it will find it. And if that's the one I used last, it'll, you know, it's fine. You just click okay and it goes on. Then if I unplug it and I move it over to the other machine where I have my laser and use a different UC 100, it will come up and say, has to update firmware. So it takes a minute, it'll still work, mm -hmm. but it takes a minute. And, you know, and then of course, now when I go back to the other one, it's going to do the same thing. Uh, but that's with Mach 3, but I believe the UC 100, I, I'm sorry, UC CNC software, I believe it will only work with that one UC 100 motion controller. So if I wanted to move it from machine to machine, I'd have to take the UC 100 with it. Yes. Yeah, that's switch. my understanding as well. Um, I think, um, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of limiting, but, um, you know, I, I guess there's a reason for it. Maybe, um, uh, you know, that's their form of, of controlling, you know, the revenue. Because if you don't have one of those, um, you're not going to be able to use the software. And to my knowledge, you can't use UCCNC with um, um, a smooth stepper or or anything else that I'm aware of. Can you? Uh, I I don't think so. I think it only works with, with their product. Their their products. Yeah. Which, like I said, to me, that's what was can kind of confusing to me because. I just wanted to buy the software and I'm thinking, wow, this is a great deal. It's 60 bucks and Mach 3 is 175. This mm -hmm. is awesome. And then when I got it and figured out, well, wait a minute, by the time you had the 115 for the UC 100, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. But, uh, well, you know what? These folks are in it, um, to make good software and to make a profit. So, you know, whatever they got to, they've got to do, I, I can't fault them for it. It's just, yeah. it would just be nice to, to know these facts uh, up front. Um, you know, I think it's a good product. I would carry it, uh, but I haven't looked into, you know, um, into yeah. that. Well, I yeah. I think I've still got it on this one laptop. Um, and, you know, I used, you know, because I was going to do a show and talk about it. So I obviously wanted to use it a little bit. It's really easy to set up, mm -hmm. especially if you've already got Mach 3 on that computer, because it kind of imports most of the settings, if not all of them, and it just, put, and you're ready to go. I didn't particularly like the, and I'm sure it could probably be changed, but I didn't particularly like the the interface. I didn't like the, the layout as much. Mm -hmm. I didn't like the pastel colors. Uh, I, and again, it's probably because I'm an old Mach 3 user, and you know how old guys are. They don't like change. Uh, so, I, you know, I just like Mach 3. And, and I don't know, I maybe, I'm sure I'm not the only guy, but I use the default Mach 3 screen. I haven't gone to any of those. Yeah. You know, and it's just because I've been using it for so long. I've actually downloaded some of those other. Uh, the screen sets? Yeah, the screen sets. Yeah. And I'll load it in. I'm like, well, that's kind of cool. But and then you go to use it and it's like, well, wait a minute. Where is that? It's moot, you know. So I always end up going back to that default screen set. Yeah, that's it's funny. I when I got started, I started with that default screen set. And then uh, early on, I went over to the big text um, screen set and uh, I was stuck on that for a while. And I wanted to try the Mach 2010 set. Um, one of the guys in, in the in the group actually wrote that. And uh, so I ordered up a copy of it, and it looks so completely different from what I was used to that for for the first while I couldn't use it. Uh, but eventually, you know, after I got used to it, it was it was fine. But um, yeah, I'm I'm familiar with being stuck on on uh, what you're used to. The uh, the pastel colors did kind of throw me in UC uh, CNC, but. Um, Overall, it's been a, it's been a, a good product. I, I yeah, you know, yeah. I, I mean, like it. I said, I, I don't want to sound like I'm knocking it because I, I know several 
people that have garage work CNCs and, and they're using mm -hmm. it and they love it. Um, but like I said, it just, it just wasn't for me. I, I like, mm -hmm. I like the old Mach three. I got a, I got a question, another question over here in the chat, Bill. I want to ask you, mm -hmm. uh, David Battershell, uh, wants to know what does Bill like to use as CAD in cam? Uh, that's a great question, David. Um, I tend to use um, a variety of things because I'm a CAD junkie. Uh, I've been, I learned uh, AutoCAD on a 286 computer back in the day. Now, you, that tells you how long ago it was. But um, after um, messing around with that, I, you know, started going with other programs and I was a big a Libre design user for a long time. You know, I've done SolidWorks, I've done Rhino, uh, Aspire, um, you name it. I, I just like to use whatever is convenient. I've been playing with uh, Fusion 360 lately uh, and there are things I like about it and there are things I hate about it. Um, but I can say that about every piece of software. So it really just depends on what it is that you're trying to uh, do. Um, if I if I was probably down to just one piece of software right now um, for CAD and CAM, it probably would be uh, Aspire, just because I can get things done quicker. Um, if I were doing metalworking and it was a really big detailed part, I would probably try and muddle through with Fusion 360. Um, I know that's a cop out because I gave you too many answers, but um, <laughs> but that's if you could see my desktop, there's about 300 icons across it, and you know if I can uh, afford the software and get a copy of it out, you know I'll I'll try it out. There's some really good software out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, I think Fusion 360 is kind of the thing I see folks talk about a lot now. Uh, I've in fact I've got. Uh, on one of these laptops, I got a uh, demo version of that. Yeah. And I played around with it. I just have never been, you know, of course, I'm uh, an old SolidWorks user for many mm -hmm. years. And the uh, I, when I used to work in the office, the guy that was on the other desk across, across the office there, he would be, you know, he was the AutoCAD, mm -hmm. in, AutoCAD inventor guru. And of course, I was the SolidWorks guy, and he'd be over there just—I mean, it's, I thought he was typing a novel or something. He'd be just a clicking away, you know. And I'm like, "What are you doing? What are you doing? Send a letter you home to mom or something?" And he goes, "No, I'm working." I'm like, "Because well, he, he was into the keyboard shortcuts, yeah. and you know, SolidWorks is all kind of a click, click, mouse click mm -hmm. thing." So it was funny listening to him. Uh, draw in AutoCAD Inventor because it sounded like he was typing something. Yeah, that that is the, the case for that. It is just one of those programs. Uh, There's so many keyboard shortcuts for everything. Um, but you got that in every program. Aspire uh, has a lot of sh keyboard shortcuts nobody knows about. Um, they save me a lot of time, but uh, I like the mouse. Um, and, you know, so that's what I, I tend to use. Uh, the school that I... Um, sometimes uh, teach at, uh, I'm an adjunct instructor at a, 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 one of the state colleges here. Um, we use MasterCam and we use SolidWorks for pretty much uh, everything that they do there. And um, to me, MasterCam is, is a very difficult, very powerful program. Um, but it's beyond the reach of most people. You know, I can't really afford a, a copy of master cam yet let me put it that way um yeah it's it's pretty pricey stuff yeah it's about like buying you know half a tormach um and then you know yearly uh maintenance fees but it you can't knock it it is probably the industry standard as far as um uh cad and cam goes um if you know master yeah. can you can always get a job machine shops yeah yeah you can always get a job if you if you're good with master can um but you can say the same with solidworks 
and you know the same with um the um hyper mill from autodesk which is the fusion's big brother um mm -hmm. yep so yeah it's it's whatever you want uh to use i i don't have a problem with anybody using anything they they can get it done with yep. yeah um there's another question over here in the chat javi hello javi uh, <laughs> he had he says question for bill do you go to referral network at all what is your preferred marketing strategy to increase your client base um i do i've not heard of referral network if uh javi if you want to refer me to it uh i'd, I'd appreciate it brother um Enjoyed meeting you down in uh, uh, Atlanta there uh, last spring. That was uh, that was awesome. Um, yeah, that was a that was a good time. I do most of my um, um, referrals and, and increasing business through um, social media: Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, you know, I have a presence in each of those, and I think. You know, anybody who's trying to do business should at least have a presence. You know, if I could give you one tip, that would be go get your name and whatever social media there is out there. Somebody tells you about a new social media like this referral network, go in and, and get, you know, if your name is, is, is Javi, go get Javi uh, in, you know, that, get it in LinkedIn, get it in um, Twitter, get it in, because you know, get it while you can, because somebody else will grab that and, you know, then, you know, they won't identify you. Uh, but it makes it easier for people to find you and, you know, everywhere. So, yeah, that's, that's a good point. You know, I, we were talking, I was talking, I think with hobby, I was going to hang out with him the other, uh, just the other day. And we were talking about, uh, uh, domain names, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you get, like, fortunately, when I got ready to get DaveGatton.com, nobody had, there wasn't one. So I was able to get that. But um, I also bought uh, Gatton CNC, even though I was using the DaveGatton.com website to, to post all that. But I thought, well, just to keep somebody else from getting it, because you never know when you might mm -hmm. might do that. So, yeah. Uh, but, you know, right, so I guess the same thing would be true with uh, social media names if be the first one to get it mm -hmm. yeah and and the dot coms especially now um when i wanted to uh get bill com, it had already been taken by a guy who's a big buddy holly fan and you know that's what he had a buddy holly website and so i was not able to get that so um you know when i i i figured well what else could i get i didn't want you know, uh, um, you know, one of the other ones, .net or, or anything. So um, I thought about how I introduced myself to somebody, and I walk up and said, "Hi, I'm Bill Griggs." So I have I'm Bill Griggs dot com. You know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, like you say, sometimes you can't uh, you can't get exactly what you want. That's why for years I had that website and instead of, I tried to get sidewinder cnc.com mm -hmm. and it wasn't cnc's it was something totally different I don't really know why they had cnc on there but anyway I had to get cnc sidewinder.com yeah so yeah it still works let's see let me look over here and see if there's any other questions we're running uh, but we did get a little bit of a late start, so we're out of time here. Has anybody got any other questions they'd like to uh, ask Bill before we uh, before we wrap it up here? A lot of folks are in our chat. We've got uh, 54 folks watching. Yeah, I can't see the chat from from this side, uh, but uh, okay. I'm I'm yeah, not. we've got uh, hobbies out there. David Battershell, the Hamlin Woodshop, G Code Design. That's my buddy uh, Juan. Mm -hmm. Good to see you in here, Juan. Peter Pesuelos from then uh, New Zealand. New Zealand. Kevin Calhoun. 
okay, David we, Jones, David Stewart, Jeff Connor. Yeah, a lot of yeah, names. A bunch of folks over there. Yeah. Um, you know, um, one thing you know we kind of breezed over in the in the beginning. We didn't um, talk much about the CNC Router Tips podcast. So, as long as we got a lull, I think I'll, I'll mention it a little bit because I don't. I, well, I'm that's not big at promoting. I'm, I'm driving. I'm driving to Hickory, North Carolina tomorrow, Bill, and I've got probably about four or four and a half hours. So that's probably what I'm going to be listening to. Oh, fantastic! Uh, uh, you're the <laughs> one. Yeah. <laughs> So for the for the folks who are watching or, or, or listening in on this, um, CNC Router Tips podcast is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, it's a podcast about using your CNC router. Um, and when we started out, it was just answering your questions and, and uh, you know, giving you tips on how to use it and uh, the software and things like that. And then occasionally I got great folks like Dave to come on the show and uh, we talk to them and listen to their story because I want to hear about Dave the person, not necessarily what, you know, all the things Dave's doing, um, because that would fill up, you know, hours and hours of a show. But, I, you know, I'd like to, folks to get to know Dave or, or, or uh, you know, uh, Peter uh, was on the show recently. And so, you know, it's that kind of show where we just talk about CNC. And uh, one of my focuses has been on starting this uh, using CNC to, to generate some income, because that's what I've been trying to do. And, uh, you know, if you are interested in any of that, just check it out at cncroutertips.com. There, that's my shameless plug. <laughs> well, I think uh, I've got the chat popped open big here, but I think down in the description, I've got a uh, uh, your CNC router tips uh, and also your YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. uh, already, already plugged there for you, Bill. So. Oh, I mean, it, you. you know, this, this, it's okay to do a shameless plug. Now I've got my dog wanting to bark over here. Be quiet. You didn't want out a while ago when I tried to get you to now. Now uh, I wanted to ask you, Dave, how did the, how did the get together go? Uh, you had a get together recently down there. Yeah, we had, uh, well, you met Melinda at the. Yep. Hi, Melinda. Uh, um, she has a really awesome shop in Stockbridge, Georgia which is about 15, 20 minutes from me. Mm -hmm. And um, she offered to host the, the meetup there, uh, which worked out great because she's got a big, long driveway, lots of room to park cars and stuff. And uh, so we had a, a very nice meetup. We had a bunch of folks, uh, a lot of them from the chat uh, were, uh, were there. Um, we catered some... Uh, Barbecue from Shane's Rib Shack, my favorite barbecue mm -hmm. place, um, and just had a, just had a great time. Uh, I had a I took one of the Garage Work CNCs I have in my garage as a demo machine. I carried it over there and you know answered a lot of questions about it and just had just had a great time uh, hanging out with some folks. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, oh. Darn, his name escapes me right now. Wiegand, Nick Wiegand. That's mm -hmm. that's who it is. Nick Wiegand. Yeah. He brought his little uh, that little bitty ox build. Uh, mm -hmm. or, no, was it open builds? Open build yeah, ox. Open yeah. Build thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was funny, Bill, because I was standing there showing him my machine, and he comes walking in the big door with that thing up under his arm. <laughs> you know, because it's it's so tiny. But uh, but he brought that and, and showed that a little bit, so that was kind of cool. But mm -hmm. just I mean, just a, a a great time with a great bunch of folks. Yeah, that's that's really excellent. Awesome. Yeah, I wish I had been in Atlanta at this time uh, of the year. Uh, I make a, a trip down a, a couple times a year, but uh, I didn't have enough advance warning about uh, your get together this time. So. Yeah, well, we kind of we kind of threw it together pretty quick. But now that we've done it, uh, you know, Melinda has kind of already talked about it. It'd be cool to make that an annual thing. So mm -hmm. uh, we may we may try to do that. That would be fantastic. I'm hoping uh, uh, I've got this new toy coming. And uh, I'm hoping to have 
some information for it in the next episode of the podcast, but uh, it hasn't got here yet, and I'm really excited about it. And uh, it's uh, I, I will give a hint. It is a CNC controller, and uh, it, it looks like a nice solution, and I'm, I, I can't wait to get it. But I don't have it yet, so uh, maybe okay. that will be a sneak, sneak peek. But uh, I, I remember you had the the oh what is his name? Ah, uh, it's escaping me now. He makes the masso. Um, uh, Jet. Yes, yeah. Um, on and you know this is kind of a similar um, thing to it. So it's really kind of cool to see these standalone controllers coming out. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I'm really excited for what that can do for building your own CNCs. You know. So, it should be interesting. Okay. Carl Whitaker. He's in the chat and he says, will Mach 4 run with the Xylotex kit? Should yes, run it without it any problem. Yep. It, it runs it all, every day. Um, I know of at least three people who are using it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good to see you on here, Carl. Carl's a, a, an old classmate of mine. He and I went to high school together. Excellent. He's uh, fairly recently, I guess, completed his uh, Gat and C. Well, I guess he's, I, I don't know, he may not be done completely with it. He's building a little Gat and CNC. So. Mm -hmm. and I see Mark Lindsay has been working kind of uh, at a at a steady clip, but not fast. Is he done yet? Uh, I think he's done. I think he's uh, just on the... Uh, because I, I, I didn't know if he was doing limits, weekly which is, video schedule or something. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's he's building one. I tell you, there's there's a bunch of those things out there now. Oh yeah, I, I was really impressed that he came all the way from Portland to uh, to Atlanta for for that uh, show, and uh, you know, really super guy, just as nice in person as he as he was uh, uh, online. And most folks are, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I haven't met a CNC guy I don't like yet so so far. I, I hope never to. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, I I like I said I I'm excited to go to this Hickory show. I went there for the first time last year, and you know when I go to the Atlanta show because you know I've been doing YouTube stuff and you know long enough that it's not unusual for somebody to recognize me at the Atlanta show. Uh, but when you go to a whole different state or something and people come up and, you know, I, you know, and of course they come up and talk to you and forgetting that you don't know what they look like. Yeah. But, you know, but it, that, that was really cool. Um, meeting folks that, you know, I may not have ever even seen their face cause they, you know, they may not have been on a hangout, but they've been in the chat or. Mm -hmm. You know, watch my videos or something like that. And it's really cool to just meet all these fantastic folks that, that all have, you know, all like the same kind of stuff I like. Because mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a CNC, as Peter Pasuela would say, I'm a CNC nut, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 funny. You, you, you get to meet somebody there and, and uh, you know, after you've done a few YouTube videos or, or whatever, they start to recognize you. But they'll be talking to you uh, about what it is they're doing. And you could have been talking to them for five minutes and they will mention the project that they did. And you recognize them from the project, but you've never seen their face. And you're like, Oh, you're the guy that made that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, who's, whose house did we have that, uh, that big uh, party at? Um, um, Oh, was it uh, Joel? Joel. Yeah. Joel at, at, uh, at Joel's workshop there. Probably. And, yeah, Joel Crawford, and he makes the Spartan knife holders. And I had seen those things everywhere, but I never knew that he was the one doing them and, uh, you know, putting that all together. So it was really nice to uh, to meet Joel and, you know, put the project and the person together. Yeah. I think Dave's on hold so he can take the, uh, the dog uh, out for a second. Yeah, I had to I had to get him outside. He 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 was too persistent. I'm thinking, well, if he's that persistent, it he's got to go. Yeah, it must be important. 
<laughs> so, yeah. I, I want to uh, ask you about the wall behind you, Dave. Okay. Um, what? So, tell me the origin of that. How'd you come up with that? What is is that pallet wood? <laughs> um, no. Uh, I did a I did a video on it. Uh, it's been it's been up here now for a couple of years, I guess. Um, but I was watching a YouTube video uh, on how to install a plank wall. Mm -hmm. And it was basically kind of a commercial for a company that sold the, the stuff, you know. And I really liked the look of it. After, after I watched the video, I thought, well, I'm going to that website. And I came in here and I measured this wall and figured out how much square footage I had and, and went to that website and found out that the stuff that I really liked was going to cost me about $1,200 just to do this wall. That's just mm -hmm. buying the stuff, not putting it up. So I, I thought, well, Aaron, I don't know if I like it that much. So I got to messing around and I took uh, just a regular construction grade two before. And I had a scrap piece, you know, a couple feet long or so. And I, I put it on my table saw and I figured the curve of my blade. You know, well, first I did, I, what I did is I ran it down each side about an eighth inch to kind of square up mm -hmm. the corners, you know, to get rid of that rounded edge on a two before. And then I turned it up like this. And I think if I remember right, I had to set the, where each piece is about 300 thousandths, just a shade under uh, mm -hmm. five sixteenths. And I would run them through the table saw and then, of course, take them and flip them over and run them again. And I cut four little planks out of that scrap piece of uh, two before. Mm -hmm. And then I got to looking at them and I'm like, I don't know. That's a lot of cutting, but I think it could be done. So I think I'm trying to remember exactly how many two befores I used. I, I think I had about... 60 bucks worth of material but it was a lot of labor because i what i did is i cut like i said i cut the rounded edges off and then i cut four foot lengths three foot lengths and two foot lengths mm -hmm. and i had a if you could have seen out back here i had every sawhorse that i owned and this is all just stain so this like right uh, dark walnut. Mm -hmm. That's uh, I think colonial uh, colonial maple. I think that's, that's. I can't remember. Yeah, I think that's the colonial maple, golden oak, and then this, which always looks blue to me, but it's supposed to be weathered gray. But anyway, so I I took all these two foot, three foot, and four foot pieces, stained them all different things and just came in here and just started sticking them and that's this is what i ended up with that's a great story man it's that's a great story it's, uh, yeah i did a, i did a video on it and i've got a lot of uh compliments you know comments in the in that video you know because it's it's just i mean it's a lot of work it, you know it's all I, what i call sweat equity it's a lot of sweat equity but it's really cheap because it was only about 60 bucks Worth, well, I think maybe 70 bucks figuring the material and the stain that I bought mm -hmm. to do it. Yeah, that's pretty That's pretty amazing. You should put a link to that uh, video uh, at the end of this one. Yeah, well, since we talked about it, I probably will. Now. But, <laughs> I'll go uh, watch that now. Yeah. Uh, and what's what really was the, the whole cause of this i guess is i had a I, right used to be right behind me was a fireplace and i i hired a guy to uh repair my well he was gonna he was gonna pull all the uh siding off and reside my fireplace or the chimney and when he got to there was a lot more water damage than what was originally thought, but you couldn't see it because it was, it was all outside, you know, on the mm -hmm. chimney part. 
so I thought, oh man, we're gonna have to redo the whole thing. And so anyway, this guy, I'm not even gonna mention his name, but he turned out to be one of those guys that once he got a little money, he didn't show up. Mm -hmm. And so I sat with a hole in the side of my house for I don't know, a few weeks. I mean, it had like he had like a piece of uh, wafer board nailed up over to kind of cover the hole, but I'm like, this is ridiculous. So I had to send him packing. And then by that time I was so frustrated, I just got another guy and I said, just, just put me a wall up. Just, mm -hmm. you know, I'll do something else with a fireplace. So, but yeah, that's, that's, that's how this wall came about. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. But I don't, uh, now he's barking to get in. Listen to him. Uh, I don't see any other questions. Let me scroll up, see if I missed any. No, I don't, I don't see any right off the bat here. Anyway, we've got still 55 viewers. I want to uh, thank all you guys for uh, watching tonight. Um, always have a pretty decent, decent crowd. Usually, Bill, this is the first time I've done – since I've kind of started doing these things on Wednesday, this is the first one I've done here behind the wall that everybody was used to seeing. I usually do them from the shop, mm -hmm. but I thought, well, since it's just going to be me and you chatting tonight and it's kind of cold outside <laughs> anyway, uh, cause we're hitting a cold snap right now. I would, uh, just do it from in here. Yeah. It, so. it's, that's fine for me. I, um, uh, thought about whether I wanted to do this from out in the workshop or in here in 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 a nice comfortable chair, and I guess you know which one won. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Well, like I said, if I you know I thought well, there's really no reason for me to be standing out there in the cold when we're just talking because I'm not gonna you know. But all the other times I'm out there and usually you know trying to demo something or mm -hmm. you know show something. So that's. Uh, that's kind of why I started doing these things a little different. And and I really don't know what I'm going to do. I don't even know if I'm going to do one next week or not. It's just, I kind of look at my uh, emails and see what kind of questions I get. And when I get enough questions about a certain thing, I'm like, okay, this Wednesday, I'm going to talk about this and, and show them, you know, that, cause it's out there. I can actually show it instead of just talking about it in here. So yeah. Yeah, demos demos are uh, um, much better than you know just sitting around talking about something. But um, you know, every once in a while, you just gotta uh, have a conversation with with your friends and see what you know what's up in the world. I appreciate yeah. that. So, yeah. Um, I, I'm okay, here's a here's a uh, here's a question. We'll we'll do this one last question, and we'll sure. we'll we'll let Bill get out of here. It says, uh, James Trimble. Hey, James. Says, for Dave's, or for Bill slash Dave, how did you initially grow your audience when you first started? Well, hmm. Um, I guess I grew my audience by being persistent, being there. Um, uh, cause I, you know, it may seem to folks like, um, you know, I had rapid growth, but when I started the Facebook group, um, there was nobody there, you know, there was me, me and maybe five other guys I knew in the Facebook group and, um, we grew it together. I'm not responsible for CNC router tips group growing big. It's the members reaching out to other members and saying, hey, this is, you know, this is a good place to talk and and see. So um, one thing I did do um, was every time I got a new member, I would welcome them into the group. Uh, you know, I would say something in, in the early days, uh, probably before the first 3,000 people or so, I would go and look at their profile and see what it was they were building, and I would actually make a comment about something that was, you know, in there. Like if I were looking at 
my picture here right now, I might say, hey, Bill, what's that quadcopter that you did you make that, you know, mm -hmm. and welcome to the group. And, you know, that little personal touch of, of um, somebody knowing that they weren't just another person, uh, you know, random person coming into the group um, seemed to help. Now, I read a lot of books, okay? Seth Godin, who's, who's some internet guru, if you haven't ever read his stuff, he's pretty pretty wise. He says to do things that don't scale. In other words, to do something that sets you apart personally as, as, a, as an individual. And so my thing that I chose that didn't scale was I have welcomed every single member that came into the Facebook group personally. I sat down and I typed, you know, welcome to the group. We're up to 9,000. Uh, well, Facebook is being slow right now. But we're, we're up to um, nearly 10,000 members right now. We're, we're about 70 members away from uh, 10,000. And I've done my best to try and welcome each one. So that's it. Just be yourself. And uh, James, you've already got this skill because I met you in Atlanta, and it was an awesome privilege to meet you. If you just bring that with you, Whatever you do, you'll do fine. Uh, go ahead, Dave. <laughs> yeah, I I really don't know how to answer that because I there's really nothing that I do that I do to try to grow an audience. I mean, I just I just you know because of the 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 stuff I sell the the Gattons and the Garage Works and this kind of stuff. Uh, and plus being in CNC stuff for a long time, uh, you know, I just try to help people get started, you know, whether they buy one of my things or buy somebody else's, it doesn't matter. You know, I try to answer questions and stuff like that. So, but I don't like right now I would have, we got 50 something folks still watching. It wouldn't matter to me if there was two, uh, you know, because I'd still enjoy our conversation, whether we whether we had anybody here watch it or not. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I don't I don't know if there's any secret. If there is, I don't know. And I'd like to too. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I mean it, it's, it's like I said. It's for what I do. It's it's nice to have you know to look down and to be you know fifty some people watching or whatever. Uh, but it's but it's not why I, why I do this. Um, and I, I was going to joke at, at first, but I, I figured I'd, I'd better not. I, <laughs> but I was going to tell you when you when you first when we first went live that that you know that 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 uh, John had uh, what was his name John Reveal I think mm -hmm. had downloaded that episode, so we didn't need to do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. I, I'm I'm honored that you that you asked me to do it. It was um, it was it was very nice to to be asking. I enjoy talking with you anyway. So you know, the the thought well, of them. I, I tell you, Bill, I was just you know, of course, I I didn't want to delete any of my you know episodes. But when it was when it was that one, I'm thinking, oh man, that was a good one. You know, so that's why, you know, I didn't waste much time before I contacted you and said, here, here's what I did. Come on, we got to gotta get back together and, and talk about this stuff some more. Yeah, I, you know, the highlight of my day is actually talking to people about CNC. You know, so w when somebody asks me a question or emails me or, or whatever, I do my best to try and get back to them because I really do enjoy this stuff. It's not, um, yeah, not. Not everything I do is about um, uh, business. In fact, most of the things I do aren't about business. Ask my wife. Um, but but uh, the fact is, I really like CNC. I like talking to people about it. And um, if there's some way I can ever help you or anybody out there, just ask and I'll do my best. Or find you somebody who can help if I can't. Right, right. Okay, well, 
I guess uh, I don't see any other questions over there. Got a lot of uh, good show. Thanks, Dave and Bill. Got a lot of those over there. Appreciate it, guys. Uh, again, Bill, I appreciate you uh, coming on, and you know, don't be a stranger. Anytime you want to come on one of these uh, little live tube live streams, whatever we call it, um, you're always welcome. Oh, thank you, thank you, and and I, I would like to have you back on my show sometime in the future uh, uh, when you when you get a moment. Yeah, well, um, yeah, give me something good to talk about because. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's Might a nice boring rehab. So. Oh no, we never we never hit the old stuff again. We 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 keep it moving. So yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. All right, everybody. Uh, appreciate appreciate y'all. Uh, thanks for hanging with me and Bill. And Bill, like I said, I appreciate it. And I guess uh, nobody else got any questions. We're gonna wrap this one up. My pleasure. Well, everybody have a good night and have a great weekend. And if you're over in the Hickory, North Carolina area, make sure you come up, say hello, because I'll be there both days. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. All right. Good night, y'all.